first of all, I want to correct Janice. This is not something that I graciously offered to do. <laughs> Carrie Hancock approached me, and just so you know, nobody tells Carrie Hancock no. <laughs> she gets a look on her face, and if she gets this look and comes at you, don't look at her. Don't meet her in the eye, because you're going to do whatever it is she wants you to do. <laughs> well, step just a little closer to the microphone. Okay. So I'm sitting in the back of the church, and I see her coming, and she has the look. So I think to myself, puff up. They hate that. So I did, and she came to me, and she said, Susan, I would like for you to do a stewardship speak. And I thought, you can do this, Susan. Say no. Well, what came out of my mouth is, and before I could even say no, she says to me, Think about it and pray about it. And I went, okay. Part of my puff up went down. So I go home. I pray about it. Think about it. I'm going to say no. I'm absolutely going to say no. She comes at me soon, not even a week later. And she says, well, what do you think? And instead of saying no, what came out of my mouth was, okay, I'll do it. So. Here I am. She asked me to tell you what I love about this church. It's easy. Um, the Strasburgers are the oldest family in this church, living members. We've got our fifth generation is here. So I got to tell you, I love the history of this church. I'm not going to bore you with all of it because there's a ton. What I love is the idea that when they were building this church, the ladies came to raise money they came up here and played cards and bet money, and that money went to, to help build the church. I love the idea of that. I think it's hilarious. Some of the wood that was used in this church, there were railroad people, engineers. Whenever they would order wood for the church, they'd kind of over-order, and it somehow mysteriously ended up here. So I don't know if the wood is still here or not, but it was, I don't know, stolen? So I love the idea of that. So, um, Fritzie's Bell, I don't know if you know that story, but you should hear it. It's a great story. All the stained glass is fabulous, all the history. But, you, you know, that wasn't really what, what I wanted to tell you. What I love also are the memories of this church. My children were baptized here. I've seen funerals, I've seen weddings. I have, um, just gone blank. So, so besides the memories here, oh, I know. I have had the privilege of meeting Father DiPaolo, Allwine, Andy Doyle, Mike Wyckoff, Justin, Janice, and it's, it's been wonderful. We've, we've had nothing but wonderful priests here. It's been good and it's been bad. I've seen a lot of it. I've watched the church almost split. It did split. And you wondered at that time if it's going to make it. It did. But besides the memories, and there, like I said, there are a lot of them, after 40 years, Oh, you know what? There are some even better memories, I've got to tell you. My first memory of this church, I didn't know what an Episcopalian was until I married mine 40 years ago. My first memory, Greg brought me here, and we came into the church in this beautiful place. And people, when they came in, they were bowing down. Well, I didn't bow down. And it, because of the gorgeous stained glass window. You can't see the cross. So this was really confusing me. It upset me a little bit. Well, I can't remember if it was that night or a week later, we came to a fish fry. There were men outside cooking, probably four of them, drinking beer. Well, I'd never seen anyone drink beer at a church before. And that kind of freaked me out a little bit too. So I said, Greg, there are men out there drinking. He said, oh, don't worry about it. It's the Flambe brothers. And that was Garza and Carberry and Shobe and Hancock, I believe, were out there. 
So I went home and I called a friend of mine because I really did like Greg. We weren't married at the time. And I was like, I'm having a problem. I said, I went to this church and I think they're a bunch of beer drinking idol worshipers. <laughs> Because you walk in and they're bowing down at the stained glass window. And you, we went and there were men outside cooking, drinking beer. She said, Susan, stop right there. There were men cooking, drinking beer. That's all you need. I said, okay. So here we are. So besides the memories, the outreach programs, the outreach programs, I love them. And there are too many of them to mention, but children who are going to get Christmas that may or may not be as nice as they were, the backpack buddies, the lunches that are provided downtown for the down and outs, and the, the sack lunches for the children. The church is amazing. But besides the memories and the history, I thought longer, what, what is it that I really love about this church? And it's the people. It's the people. It's you guys. You can come into this church, and I don't care who you are or what you are, good, bad, right, wrong, well-to-do, could use some more, intelligent, maybe not so much, use ta talents or somewhere else. You fit in here. I don't know about the 8 o'clock because we don't come very often, but the 1030 is just off balance and goofy enough <laughs> that it truly doesn't matter. And if you've been to 1030, you know, because sometimes we could mess up communion. People have been doing this for 40 years, can get it wrong. And it's not every Sunday, but once in a while. So I'm not going to stand up here and ask you for your money or your time, because Henry did that last Sunday quite eloquently and forcefully. What I want you to do is remember that God is in this place. If you're not sure what you're supposed to do, and most of you are, you just sit still and listen. He's here. He'll tell you. God loves this place. If he, if he didn't, we would have been shut down long ago. So truly, that's what I love about this place. Thank you. Thank you, Susan.